Alright everybody, hello and welcome. I'm Frederick Ekmark, this is Life Through the Lens and today we're in a new spot uh, to check out in Mallorca. I've done a, video, a few videos from here before, uh, but today let's look at Barcares, which is the Bay of Cuenza, a little bit closer because it's a really nice spot here now when we're in August and the sun is warm, the water is warm and it's really nice and windy, about 15, 16, 17 knots today. So we're in for a good day. Okay. So let's have a look at this, but first this. Today we want to introduce a nice spot up in the north of Mallorca, in the Bay of Poyenza. It's a small spot uh, where normally kites are around and there's a little space on the right side here in the big bay that's great for windsurfers and wingers. This is what it looks like on a quiet day, uh, no people around. And this is what it looks like when we're there. So the wind surface has been here for ages, forever. And what's new is that us wing foilers have uh, discovered this place and are joining them. And we're all sharing this little gem. Because it's really, really a nice spot. When the winds are up from the north, northeast, because of the houses, you're sheltered. It's really nice. You can put your stuff up here. You can change, on, put clothes on and off, and not being in the wind. And this is especially helpful in the winter, and the winds are really coming in and are cold. As you can see, these are some scenes from the bay. It's a large, large bay and very popular for water sports. The kites uh, are there, and I've been there for a long time, of course. The good thing about this spot, it's, it's a big bay and there's room for everyone. There's room for kites, there's room for windsurfers and there's space for us wing foilers. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more of videos like this, subscribe and hit the bell to get notified when new vi videos are coming up. And share uh, this video with your friends to let them know what you're interested in and what you're doing. There's no canal here, which means that you can go in and you can go freely. Um, this also means that um, we all have to share and I think it works really well. We all know that you have to keep distance to each other. So I have never seen any problem really in this bay all the times I've been there. So we're really happy that we have this one. And as you come in here, you see Pepper Castor coming in. And of course, as it's a little bit uh, leeward here and uh, the wind is coming down and you want to go all the way in and here we have Jerome Jerome has a good level really good level he's a long time wind surfer that transferred to wing foil or doing both uh, and he got a really good level fast and when he is out it just looks so easy isn't it when you have a good level things are easy and you can just do it He's on a small board, but a decent, a 1280 foil, which is not that big. Uh, but it seems to be no problem for him. Uh, and this wind, uh, we're talking about 14, 15, 16, 17 knots, maybe in the gusts. So it's a good wind and a good day uh, in, in this amazing bay in Mallorca. Oh, a little jump. Yeah, it's getting <laughs> happy to be in, in the sea. Um, Happy to have this space, happy to have this good winds and all of the things together. Yeah, you can't be other than happy, can you? So. I also want to take the opportunity to tell you about our, the change of boards. I first started with the 7.2 starboard hyperfoil, um, 125 liters, which was a real big and stable board and it did me really, really well. Had it for maybe three months or something like that. But after a few months or three on the first board, I was ready for a progression to a smaller board. Changed to a 6.4, 92 liter and had that for like seven months and it was a really, really, really good and that board took a lot of time to get used to and a lot better uh, but after about 10 months I've made a progression now to an even smaller board and it looks like this as you can see this is a starboard wing board 5.8 uh, 
Yeah, and it's about 88 liters. And in the same time, I also changed the foil mast. So now I have a 92 centimeter carbon fiber mast uh, to go on this one, which gives another 20 centimeters height of the whale when it's choppy. So you have a lot easier to stay above the waves. Uh, this works really, really well. And uh, got the 1700 E type front wing, high aspect, flies really well, together with a 250 racer staff. And this setup is really, really nice, and I'm very happy with it. Okay, back to the action, and here's Jerome Moore doing a very nice pumping, riding. It doesn't look like a wave, but it's probably a little wave, and it's just pumping, taking the wing out, out of the game, and just riding really, really nicely. So, as I said before, he's got a really good level, so he makes things look really easy. And uh, that's what we all are looking for, to make things easy, to have a good level, to enjoy this fantastic sport of wing foiling. Uh, and the freedom it gets when you finally get that board out of the water. But it's also a good spot to learn to wing, wing for it. And uh, because it's a lot of space and this sheltered little bay here that we have a little side here makes it easy to start and you can control how much wind you wet. And as you can see out there, it's pretty good wind. Uh, here we have a Jerome again. Now on this little board, it's obviously small and it's floating just enough so we can stand on it or kneel on it and but as soon as you get some directions and you get some wind in the wing things go a lot easier and there you go and you see as he's pumping pushing back on the back foot to get the, the board moving uh, in a waveform and at the same time pumping wing with the arm would be the absolute most efficient way to get your board uh, up on foil and get the board out of the water. ¿Qué vas a hacer ahora? Ahora vamos a salir los dos. Muy bien. Vale, tabla de 75 litros. El niño pesa 25. Yo 76. Uh, 100, 100, kil 100 kilos. Vale, muy bien. No, okay. 100 kilos. 100 kilos. Puede ser. Vamos. <risa> Suerte. <risa> Gracias. This is a beautiful spot and as you can tell from the wind surface here in the foreground it's not that deep it's a, a sandy bottom this not too far out and you can stand there and you can start and come in and uh, go in and out very very easily so it's a ne really really neat spot and people are very friendly the atmosphere is nice there's plenty of space for everyone so it's just nice people laugh have a good time enjoy the the wind the wing uh, and uh, the sun and the warm water. Here we got Tony Yares going out on his uh, Nash board. He's not been in the water on wing for more than, I think, a few months, but he's doing really, really well. On the beach at the back there or on the left side, 
Uh, that's where the kites usually launch. Uh, they need more space. Uh, and here are the wind surface and the wing foil are more like that. So we're not crossing path because we need different types of space between us, wind surface and, and the kites. Here we're Fernando, uh, pumping up that slick five and a half meter wing uh, with about no problem. So as you go out a little bit further from the shore, uh, the wind picks up and you're just fine. few boats uh, anchored here but they're not really in the way and it goes really well with the locals we're here they know we're here of course they if they want to go swim they'll probably go well they most likely will go to the further down there's a beach on our left side that's where you can go in and out of the water if you're a swimmer so it's it's space for everyone which is really really uh, a good thing uh, so that's why it makes this this popular but also it's not that many big waves uh, as in many other places. In Campastilla, when the wind is onshore, it really accumulates and it builds up a lot of waves pretty fast. But here in Puyensa, uh, the bottom is different and it's not that much waves, which means it's excellent learning ground when you have a flatter uh, water surface, but you have still have a good wind. As Jerome again, doing some nice turns, uh, making it look easy. All right, some of you that um, have been with me for a while might have noticed that the board, the Wingboard 58, look very like the one Diane used, Diane used to have uh, when she was out in the video, previous videos, and it's true. It's her board that I've taken over and I'm driving that one now and it's really a really nice transition. And let's take a look what she's riding now. Here we have Diane's board. It's a small board, people are joking with her and telling it's like a little toy. A 4.6, it's not a big board but she's not a big girl so it, they fit each other perfectly. Uh, on, uh, on the bottom she has an 82 centimeter aluminium mast also to get some more clearance uh, over the waves when it's on a choppy day. And she's got the 20, 2400 starboard ocean series, which is a big one, and the 270 stab. I know she has a 1500 square centimeter wing as well for days with a little bit more wind. She tells me she's really, really happy with this one. And uh, well, you have the board that suits your, your weight and your uh, riding knowledge, which is really all you need, isn't it? Okay, here comes Jerome sliding in from the right, just pulling a nice 360, making it that one as well look easy. And then getting his foot out the back strap to make a nice jibe. Jibe, as we all know, is turning down with the wind. And it's probably the first thing you learn after you've been uh, working on getting to know the balance, the handling of the wing, to go upwind, and then you want to learn how to turn. And the jibe would be the first turn that you would practice. But as you, as you can turn also up the wind, you have it like this, and Jerome is now doing a tack turn, mean that he goes up the wind, quickly changes side of the wing, and goes around and turns around that way. Looks nice it's a little bit more difficult than the jibe because it requires a faster handling of the wing and uh, therefore maybe it's the third step after first learning to control and go upwind and control the wing and board and go upwind then you want to learn how to, to do the jibe and then you will learn how to tuck and here we saw him go stay staying in the same position meaning his feet are fakey uh, which is a little bit awkward position because your feet are in the wrong way compared to what you would like to have when you have your right foot forward if you go to the right. And then, but then it turns out and do attack, then your feet get into a regular stance again. Uh, so many riders like to 
not to switch the feet they just turn and keep the feet in the same position if they have like a foot strap they stick it in there and turn and stay like that and they're fine with that my personal preference is not to ride fakie i can do it but i don't enjoy it so i always switch feet and to be honest the moment of switching feet up on foil is a very delicate moment it requires um, a very good balance some techniques and a lot of practice but it can be done it just takes time but when you do it and you come right the feeling of standing in a regular stance compared to a fakey stance is that you have a lot more power a lot of more uh, control over the board and to me it's just, just an, a superior way of of navigating to always switch your feet but it's up to each and each and everyone to choose what they would like to do here we have Fernando and, and his son uh, Felipe uh, and his Felipe is trying first time ever wing foil uh, with his father's equipment not the easiest of equipment for a beginner but if you're young uh, you learn fast and if this is the first board you know, you try so it well it happens like that it's all the time he did he did really well though uh, over the course of an hour when he was in the water trying oh uh, Jerome pulling another 360 yeah yeah showing up for the camera maybe he's doing it really well and making it look easy uh, that's how he would want to have it and until we get to that level of Jerome and all the all you other guys that are out there, we just have to practice. It's time in the water is very important. Time in the water, practice, try new things. Falling in the water is also inevitable when you're pushing the limits of what you know. Uh, and also it's very important to, to evolve, to, uh, to go for evolution, to learn new things, to get better. When you know one thing, it's it's tempting to try to go to the next one, and then you're a novice again, and then you fall, but then you also get the challenge of learning something new, which is really, really uh, a good feeling, and lo what a lot of us wants to do. We want to get we want to get better on the wing, and we want to get better and know the things and do new things. Some people like to to jump. Uh, some people like to do backflips, front flips, or turns, and th 360s in the air, which is fine. So other people like to do downwinds when you catch and ride waves uh, without having the, the force of the, w the wing. And that's another thing. So each to their own, whatever you like. Uh, it's a good thing uh, just to stay with what you like to do. Okay, guys. That was all for me today. I hope you enjoyed this little video of a nice spot here in north of Mallorca in the Bay of Prienza and a little place called Barcares next to San Marina where all the kites have been for years. And um, have you any questions? Uh, put them in the comments below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like to see more of videos like this, subscribe and hit the bell to get notified when new vi videos are coming up. And share uh, this video with your friends to let them know what you're interested in and what you're doing and to spread the word about this fantastic sport that are coming around the globe in, in with big strides. Uh, okay, so thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, as I said before. And I will see you. Yes, I will see you in the next video. Over now, Frederick Ekmark from Life Through the Lens.